I am so excited because today's show is all about minimalism. So keep watching. One of my favorite things in life right now is Netflix. I can binge watch a show. I love documentaries. I just love Netflix. It's a way I can like come home after we put the girls down and eat dinner. Winston and I, we love to have a good show and it's great. So as I was scrolling through Netflix, I saw a documentary that I had heard a lot of people talk about, but I hadn't seen it. It was called Minimalism. So I was like, oh yeah, this would be cool. I'll totally watch this. By the end, I was like, Praise in Jesus, hallelujah. I was so fired up because not only do they talk about so much of what we talk about here on the show about getting out of debt and getting rid of stuff and selling stuff and not going into debt for things. I mean, everything we talk about, they kept reiterating and like kind of had the same philosophies. But their whole thing was that they got rid of a ton of their stuff because they realized that stuff does not equal happiness. And in America today, we've fallen into this lie that the more stuff you have, the better your life is going to be. And I just realized as I was watching this, I'm like, man, we have so much crap in our lives and in our houses and in our bathroom sinks and in our closets. Like we have so much stuff, so much stuff. And you know me, I enjoy some things. So I always say, it's okay to have nice stuff. Just don't let your nice stuff have you. But you walk into the average person's home and it's like, we just have stuff everywhere. It's just, it's unbelievable. And then again, for the average American that goes into debt to buy stuff that we do not need. And I just got so fired up. So I was like, who, who set the standard of living in America? Everyone says you got to have this style, this lifestyle, like this is average, you know, whether it's a, a three car garage or a, a room for every person. It's just like, everything is just like, yeah, this is it. This is it. This is what your life should look like. This is the vacations you should take. These are the clothes you should wear. These are the brands that are great. Here's the grocery stores you should shop at. This is what's average. Who, who said that's average? Who said that's average? I'm like, no. It just made me so mad because I think we really have. We've gotten into this idea that man, our lifestyle should look like this. And no matter what we make, no matter what our income is, we deserve this standard of living. And it just fired me up. And so I was like, we've got to get the minimalists on our show. We have to get them here to talk about all of this because you guys, again, stuff is not going to make you happy. Stuff is not going to make you happy. Stuff is not bad. I want you to be able to shop at the grocery store you want to, take the vacation you want. That's fine, those are not bad things. But when we put our value and our happiness that that stuff is going to fulfill us, it's not. We end up like a rat in a wheel for our entire lives chasing something that is never ever going to fulfill us. <sighs> are you mad too? I hope you're mad. I hope you're just like, you know what? I need to get rid of some crap in my house. So the money challenge for this episode is when this show is over, I want you to look around your house and I want you to start small, but get rid of one thing. Like go in your closet and be like, wow, I have four or five black long sleeve shirts. Have I worn one shirt, one of these shirts in a year? The answer is probably yeah, no, no, you haven't. Get rid of it, sell it, give it away. I don't care what you do with it. Get rid of one thing. Because when you start to purge a little bit, it's like, Wow, I did this. I went into my closet and I did this. I went and I looked. I was like, okay, I, I had this filter of, okay, if I was going on a four week vacation, what what would I pack? So it's a lot, right? I mean, I, I, I enjoy clothes, but I'm like, half the stuff I haven't worn in like a year and a half and I always have it in there. I'm like, well, just in case that one thing comes up, I'm gonna need it. Mm -mm. I chucked all that clothes and it felt so good to purge. It felt so good. Because again, every time I buy that stuff, this little part of me thinks, life's just gonna be better if I just have that thing. I mean, have you said that to yourself? If I could just have this, I would be happy. Well, I kept saying this about one pair of shoes for about four years, and well, my lesson was a heartbreaking one. So there's this pair of shoes, well not a pair, it's more like a brand. And for like the last four years, I'm like, my goal, so stupid and shallow, Rachel, but I'm gonna say it. In my heart, I was like, my goal is to own one pair of those shoes. Just one pair of those shoes. But every time I went to go buy them, I was like, I can't. It's just too expensive. 
It's stupid to spend that kind of money on this shoe. I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. So after Caroline, our second, was born, she was probably like three weeks old, and the doorbell rang. Winston was home, and he went to the front door, he got the box, and he said, okay, Rachel. But I had Caroline, I was holding Caroline. He was like, give me Caroline, you take the box. I was like, what, what is this? He was like, this is just a gift to say, I love you. I, I'm so proud of you, just enjoy. This is just a gift from me to you. And I was like, what? And so I opened the tape of this big box and there was the name of the shoes on top of the shoe box. And I may or may not have cried. <laughs> I was like, Winston, what? No, there, I was like, there's no way you bought these. You bought these? And I was hormonal, I just had a baby people, okay? So I probably wouldn't cry over a pair of shoes today, but I did, I cried. And I'm opening them, and I mean, I mean, my adrenaline was like pumping, and my hands were sweating, and I was like, oh my gosh. And I got them out of the box, and they were beautiful. I mean, they were perfect. It was everything I thought I had ever imagined in my life. Side note, credit to him, he went in, ladies, you'll appreciate this, he went in my closet and saw my other shoes and found my shoe size, and then even the heel measurement, he took a, like a, a ruler thing to measure the size of heel that I wear with my heels in order of like the perfect shoe. I mean, like Cinderella has nothing on me. I mean, like it was like, it fit like a glove, it was perfect. And that feeling lasted for about 48 hours. And now, about a year later, those shoes are in my closet. And honestly, when I look at those shoes, what I think of is more of Winston's sweetness and love towards me than the actual shoes anymore. And so that's what's so funny to me about this accumulation of stuff that we have in our lives and this thing that we think if we could just go on that vacation, if we could just get a new car, if we could just, just X, Y, or Z, everything would be better. And you guys, I'm telling you, the finish line keeps moving and moving and moving. The finish line never fulfills you, you guys. Never fulfills you. And contentment is something that you have to find. And I'm gonna be bold here and say, you guys, there's nothing on this earth that is gonna fulfill you. The deepest part of you that's gonna be fulfilled, this piece that you think is missing, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus, that is it. That's the ultimate answer. Preacher Rachel's coming out, but I'm telling you, you guys, if you don't know him, if you're not in a relationship with him, that's the ultimate. That's the foundational of everything in your life and everything beyond that you can build on. Your giving changes, your generosity explodes. Things suddenly have a different meaning in your life. Your relationships change. Everything is dependent upon that and not stuff, not stuff. If I could tell you, tell you, I'm telling it to myself. Again, remember my shoes? Man, Rachel, come on. We gotta, we gotta learn together. We gotta practice what we preach, people, right? And so remember, stuff is not going to satisfy you. And the guys that teach this the best are the minimalists, and I'm so excited because they are coming up next. Planning and cooking meals for the family can be stressful. Knowing what I'm going to cook, having all the ingredients, and making something everyone will love is a balancing act. That's why I use Home Chef. They deliver straight to your door and get this, the ingredients are pre-portioned so you never end up wasting food and throwing money away. Plus they offer 18 fresh choices to choose from every week. You'll find easy to make, well-balanced meals that the whole family will love. And it makes me feel like a true chef at home. Home Chef, meals anyone can cook and everyone will love. Visit homechef.com slash Rachel today or use the promo code Rachel at checkout and get $30 off your first order. Guys, let's be real. Being a parent is hard work. Now that I have two daughters of my own, it feels like the to-do list never ends. And as every parent knows, your priorities change and you have to make important decisions for your child's future. That's why term life insurance is a must for every parent. It's so easy to get and it's affordable. What you're looking for is 10 to 12 times your annual income to make sure everyone in your family is taken care of. Winston and I use Xander Insurance. They do all the work for you to find the best prices and options. So go to xander.com to get started on a quote today because that's who we trust to take care of our family.
my friends, the minimalists, are here on the Rachel Cruz Show, Thanks you so guys. Thanks so much for having us. We're excited to be here. Yes, I'm so pumped you're here. And I was telling everyone earlier about your documentary and how much I just, like, watched it and became, like, obsessed with everything that you guys are doing. So for those people that have not seen the documentary or mm. even heard of you guys, just explain what is a minimalist and how did you guys get into all of this? Well, the thing with, with minimalism, the way I describe it is minimalism is the thing that gets us past the things so we can make room for life's most important things, which actually aren't things at all. <laughs> uh, there you go. Ryan and I both grew up in Dayton, Ohio. We, we were really poor, and we thought the reason we were unhappy growing up is we didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. And so when I went out, uh, when I was 18, I got that entry-level corporate job, and I spent the next dozen years sort of climbing the corporate ladder. And I'll tell you, by my late 20s, I was living the American dream. I had the six-figure salary, the luxury cars, there was nothing inherently wrong with the stuff, but I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't happy because, of course, yeah. I made good money, but I spent even better money. Yes. And so I, along with the American dream came the American debt. And I was just consumed with almost half a million dollars worth of debt at my mm -hmm. my peak, or I guess my, my nadir. At that, yeah, right, at whichever way you point. want to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I didn't feel like I had control of my time, my resources, my own life. And I realized I was focused on the wrong stuff. I was focused on success and achievement. That's really where this thing called minimalism entered my life. Yeah, for me, you know, it's, it's interesting. If you were to have told my 18-year-old self, what my 28-year-old self was going to have, I would have been so excited. And when I was 28, I found myself questioning. Um, I, was, I was the opposite of happy. I was, uh, I, was, I was drowning in debt. I was, had a lot of discontent. I was depressed. And I remember seeing Josh. Um, he had a major shift in the way he was living his life. And I sat him down one day and I was like, dude, what is going on with you? Why are you so happy? And that's what he. What, why that's, are you so why happy? Why are you what's, so happy? What's happening? What, what is going on? <laughs> and he was like, he he introduced me to this thing called minimalism. So Josh and I, we came up with this crazy idea called a packing party, where we decided to pack all my belongings as if I were moving, and then I would unpack only the items I needed over the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. So Josh came over and he literally helped me box up everything, my clothes. My kitchenware. And you my, weren't moving at this no, point. This is just the exercise. Just pretending. Yeah. Just pretending. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. idea was is if I packed up all this stuff and I really, really missed it and I really, really wanted to put everything back out, I could totally unpack it and put everything back in its place. But of course, after three weeks, I had a completely different perspective on my life, a completely different perspective on my things. And I remember going to Josh and I was like, man, this is a really, this is a really cool story. There, there might be some people out there who could benefit from this story. So, you know, we went and did what any two 30-year-old dudes would do. We started a blog. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the word. That's right. Via the internet. <laughs> but that's really where the minimalists.com started. It was yeah. it was with that 21-day packing party story. So good. Okay, that's just that's such a brilliant idea. Cause I even think, because I'm a confession, I have not done the complete minimalist lifestyle. Uh, but I but when, even when you said that, I'm like, even my bathroom sink right now, like I'm thinking about it underneath. I'm like, if I took out all the lotions and the eye cream, right? All this stuff and put it in a box to see for three weeks, what do I actually use out of that? Mm. You guys, I mean, it's probably like what? Like four things. Like it's just, I'm, sure. I'm feeling convicted right now <laughs> as you're talking about all this. Because it is, it's, that's so, such a smart way to think about it. It really is. And I love this concept that you guys live out so well, that stuff, it doesn't fulfill you, mm -hmm. right? And I think we all know that. And the contentment piece of that foundation of your heart is so huge in this process. So, so someone that's hearing this, what's like the first couple of things that they need to do? So if you do want to simplify your life, the first thing you have to do is not an action. We'll get to the action in a second. First thing you need to do is ask yourself a question. And that question is, how might my life be better with less? And, and by asking that question, you start to identify what the benefits of simplifying are. Because for me, initially, it was finances. I knew my mm -hmm. finances were out of control. I needed to simplify my life so I could regain control of my finances. But then I uncovered all these other benefits. Like, well, I made more time for creativity and the people in my life and improved health. And, and so what are the benefits for you? And understanding that won't just give you the mm -hmm. how to, but it'll give you the why to. Why am I simplifying my life? From there, I think it's important to start small. Just start somewhere. We have something on our website called the 30-Day Minimalism game. And so here's how it works. You partner up with someone, a friend, a family member, a co-worker. At the beginning of the month, you each decide on the first day we're both going to get rid of one item. Second day of the month, two items. Third day of the month, three items. So it starts off really easy. Yes. It gives you that momentum you need. 
But by the middle of the month, it starts to get more difficult. Day 15, you're like, I have to get rid of I was going to say 20 items. <laughs> right? Well, I'll do it in February. Right. Just 20 items. Right. <laughs> well, okay, so by day, by, by day 20, you're like, I have to get rid of 20 items today. Yeah. And then tomorrow, I have to get rid of 21 right. items. Whoever goes the longest between you and your friend, oh, funny. you win. But if you both make it to the end of the month, you both won because you've gotten rid of about 500 items. It's a really good start. Okay, so I'm just curious, personally. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so like, what does your house look like? Like now, <laughs> like, like where y'all live, your closets, like, like what, like, so, yes, like what's so, your life look like? If you were to walk into our home, it's not like you would jump up and say, oh my goodness, minimalists must live here. Yes, uh, yes. You really, you probably would just look at our house and say, you know, whoever lives here, they're pretty tidy. Mm -hmm. And, uh -huh. and that's because everything that we have in our lives, it serves a purpose or it brings us joy. Everything yeah. else is is gone. That's so great. Yeah, so yeah. We've got a washer and dryer and, you know, we, we, <laughs> we still like to use hot water. <laughs> right, 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 totally. So there's kind of the, extra, I, I'm guessing, I'm assuming there's a, mm -hmm. there's a, um, a range mm -hmm. to be a minimalist. There's like the crazy extreme that you're like, you know, we, we laughed about this, but like a fork and a spoon in one plate. Right, sure. or just like something like here. <laughs> yeah. And then some people, they're like, okay, I, I like the idea, but I would rather be like minimalist-ish. Sure. Like, like I don't want to dive in all the way. Can you go 50-50 on this lifestyle? We can determine what is appropriate in our lives. And I think everything that we own fits in one of three categories. It's either essential, and we all have the basic, same basic essentials. We're all wearing clothes right now. Right, uh, right. Uh, we, we need housing, we need food. Uh, we have the same essentials. And then we have the non-essentials, things that we could probably do without, but they truly add value to our life. They augment our experience of life. They amplify our life. Yep. And then we have this third category. And that category is junk. Most of the stuff that we own is junk that gets in the way of the more meaningful experiences in our life. Absolutely. Well, we went into the fa our Facebook community, and people love you there in my Facebook community. So we have some <laughs> questions beautiful. from people awesome. uh, for you guys to answer. Okay, Brianna cool. asked, in what ways can being a minimalist help save you money and become debt-free? Oh, man, I know for me, that was one of my biggest drivers behind getting into minimalism. So I'll tell you, the, the first thing that I, I did um, when I started going down this road is I took my, you know, brand new, nice, you know, Toyota, uh, Solera, you know, real nice, uh, yeah. brand new car, just a couple years old. I traded that in for a 2004 Toyota Corolla that had no car payment. And I still have that car today. It's, so that, that's the, for me, um, how I really, uh, you know, appreciate what minimalism has helped me do when it comes to my finances. I am officially, I was officially debt free back in 2015. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And um, I, I certainly owe minimalism uh, a lot of credit for that. Absolutely. So good. Okay, the next question is from Emily. She asks, my husband and I like to think of ourselves as minimalists. I think one thing that we struggle with, though, is do you buy quality, like expensive things, or do you buy cheap? I think the terms minimalist and the term frugal are very similar, but they're also different. You think When we think of a minimalist, we think of some guy living in a cave with no possessions or something. <laughs> um, in fact, I tend to own really high-quality items. I own far fewer items. It's the weird paradox of minimalism for me is, I get far more value from the few items I own yep. than if they were watered down by 300,000 other items that were sort of getting in the way, right? I mean, wouldn't you rather have one pair of really nice pants that's gonna last you for two years as opposed to 10 pairs of pants that'll last you for a month each? Right, so good. Absolutely. Katie asks, what's the very first small step you recommend to anyone that wants to move toward minimalism? Man, I, I think starting with that, that question, how, uh, how might my life be better with less, that's definitely, you're going to get the leverage by getting to the the why of, of that question. But ultimately, I mean, you know, there is the packing party approach. If someone is extreme, um, the uh, the 30 day minimalism game. I mean, that is huge. Josh talked about that earlier. That is amazing. Yes. All you have to do is find someone else who wants to encourage you and uh, to minimize and wants to minimize themselves, and you could uh, have a lot of fun with it. There's a there's a lot of little small steps you can kind of so good. Yeah, start I'm off. sensing what? another Chad and Diana challenge. Uh oh, <laughs> date night challenge to the minimalism challenge. So we'll see if that happens. Okay, Nancy asks how to part with stuff when spouse wants to keep it because we might need it for when if well i think ultimately in order to get uh, a spouse or a friend or anyone else on board with this you really have to show them the benefits i mean you know if josh had come to me and said hey ryan you know what your life's a mess 
you need minimalism. I probably <laughs> wouldn't have uh, reacted so excitedly towards that. Yes. But by, by seeing the changes that Josh made, it made me wanna ask him that question. What are you doing different with your life? You seem pretty happy. But ultimately by uh, you know just kind of living the example and showing the benefits of it, that's really how you get someone to, to make a move with their stuff. Yep. You can't force anyone into any of that. Totally. Okay, last question. Lauren asks, how to be a minimalist with children? I'm actually very intrigued. Mm. Well, What's me not having any kids, it's very easy for me to uh, <laughs> project my advice onto others. That's right. I, 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 I do like to use this one example. Um, we were at we were at an event um, where uh, one of one of the people who showed up, they were talking about what they do with their their child. The example that they gave is, you know, their their five year old, six year old would come home from school, uh -huh. and of course they got you know a piece of art that they've made that they're very very proud of. And, and they would go to their parent, oh, can, can I put this on the refrigerator? And, and the, the mom was like, yes, you absolutely can put this on the refrigerator. So as they're walking over, like it's already covered with, you know, other art projects, just the whole refrigerator door. Yeah. And they'll say, now you get to choose which one you want to replace this with. Oh, that's good. And we will go over and we will uh, get rid of this so we're not, you know, having a bunch of clutter in our lives. So that's yeah. what they do. They'll pick the one that they want to come off the fridge. They put the new one up. Then they go over and they might, you know, scan it or take a picture of, of, of the work and then, you know, toss it in the trash. Sure. But I thought that was a cool approach. That is good. Well, honestly, kid craft stuff. I'm like, Amelia comes home from like preschool and it's just a mm. crayon that's this. I'm like, right, and right. you'll never remember that. <laughs> and I'm like, unless there's like a picture or like a handprint or a footprint, right? I mean, like very small things to right. keep. Because kids crafts, they're sweet, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's important to, to realize that minimalism is not about deprivation. Mm. And we need to especially keep that in mind with our kids. I know uh, with Ella, I, I first, you know, she's five now, but when she was really little, I'm like, oh, you're gonna be a minimalist and you can play with <laughs> sticks and stones and that's it. And I'm like, well, what am I trying to do here? And like, uh, no, she gets a lot of value from the toys that she has. So having a big crate of toys that she really enjoys is great. Now, she's not gonna get more value if I got her 10 crates of toys. They're yeah. actually gonna start getting in the way, just like us. We just have our own toys as adults, right? And so with, with, with her, I've realized once she's done with a toy, the thing that I wanna instill in her is she's no longer getting value from it, but mm -hmm. some other kid can. So let's go donate that together and, that. And, and letting her realize the, the benefit of giving as well. All right, you guys, well, that was so great. Thank you so, so much for being on. I so appreciate you guys and your advice and your wisdom and everything. Likewise, thank you for everything that you do. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having us. Well, it's been fun. So you guys, if you wanna check out more about The Minimalists, you guys are on every social media channel, right? I mean, yeah. like YouTube, you have a YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, and you have a great podcast. Yeah. That's, and if you guys want more tactical ways or encouragement as you're selling your stuff to get out of debt, make sure to check out my book, Love Your Life, Not Theirs. You can click the link below. Okay, so we'll head back to my kitchen where Jenna is gonna help us take ingredients, the same ingredients to use and prep for five meals for the week. Okay, we all know food is a struggle in life, right? Eating healthy things, but yet not busting the budget, and it's just like the tug and war constantly. So I brought in dietitian, registered dietitian, Jenna Waters, to help us out. So thanks, yeah, Jenna, for being thanks here. thanks for having me. And we're thanks, actually friends from college. College friends. College friends. Go Vols. Go Vols. Okay, so you've been doing this for how long now? So I've been a registered dietitian for about five years. And my background is with, um, or in sports nutrition. And then I became a mom, we have three little ones. And I just couldn't help but think, we are professional athletes. Moms are athletes. Yes, we are. Okay. All the time. <laughs> All day, every day. <laughs> right. So, um, but at the same time, we have so many demands and need to find a way um, to balance all the variables. Yes, of and want to feed our keep kids yes. well, right? Want to feed them well, but not go crazy in the process. Yes. That's right. That's yes. right. Absolutely. And so you have two words that I love. Source. Source and systemize. That's right. Yeah, I so feel like every words. family has to find their sweet spot of Let's source things well in terms of ingredients. What ingredients are we using? So essentially, we could use the same recipes that we've always been using. Yep. But by having better ingredients, automatically changing the source, what changing it, which right. is over here. Yep. And so, so a few things that you're like, you know what? Look and see, and you can switch out a few ingredients Absolutely. right for better ones. Absolutely. No high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated oils like mm -hmm. canola oil, no soybean oil. Instead, we're going to choose things like olive oil or avocado oil. Okay. 
Absolutely. And I'm guilty of this. I'm not going to lie. Oh, me like, too. I probably yes. have like terrible stuff in my refrigerator. <laughs> but I love that you say it's just like a baby step. Like, w like one thing at a time, instead of buying that type of ketchup, just switch to buy something else. Exactly. Right? And look on the label and see. Absolutely. And I love this. This is yes, like the snack the basket. Snack basket. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> well, and it was born out of the fact that my kids ask for snacks. Like 20,000 times. times a day. Definitely, yes. So these are healthy granola bars. These are called perfect bars. Unsweetened applesauces. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of the week, I'll just chop up some veggies and put them in here. So hummus packets, just individual makes it easy. Guacamole packets, a bunch of fruit. Yeah. And our policy at home is when this is gone for the week, it's gone. Y'all are snacked out. We're yes. not buying anymore. Yes, because it can get expensive. <laughs> it can get expensive. It's so crazy. Okay. Exactly. So sourcing and then right. And then systemizing for a week. And this is going to look different for every single family. Yep. So taking a look at your week, what are maybe the nights that you can spend a little bit more time in the kitchen? What are some nights that we have to do leftovers? Or maybe a night that would have been a drive through night? Maybe let's just do a quick Instant Pot meal. So here's an example. On Monday nights, I have a little bit more time. So I always choose a recipe that I can make in bulk okay. or double or triple okay. and then use in different ways throughout the week. Okay, so where do you buy something like this? Really, this would just be at any conventional grocery store. Okay. So we just bought chicken breasts, okay. um, organic chicken breasts, and then cut them into three pieces each mm -hmm. and then just dipped it in egg wash and then into a almond flour flaxseed mixture. I make a big batch at night and then like I said, with the leftovers, we'll use them okay. in different ways throughout the week. And so this is a honey mustard dipping sauce. Okay. So then on Tuesday, here's what I do. I just do an easy sheet pan meal. Tuesdays are really busy nights for us. Mm -hmm. And so whatever night might be busy for um, you, you can just, I do a honey mustard salmon. And so okay. we're using the leftover sauce and putting it on top of the salmon. Nice. Just some veggies. It's all one sheet, really easy. Pop it in, pop Cook it in, it. bake it, roast it, whatever you need to do. So good. Yes. So this, these look familiar. Chicken these tenders. are the chicken yes. tenders. And so we're going to make chicken parm. And so uh, okay. we're just gonna take the chicken tenders and literally put the sauce over it. All over it. Yep. If you wanna do the cheese, yes. the provolone cheese, mm -hmm. that was literally like a five minute dinner. And then taco bowls, this is cauliflower rice. Yes. Um, grass I actually bought beef. that for the first time this week. I'm not it's kidding. It's good. The first time. Yeah. I'm feeling healthy. I, can, <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. A plus, that's awesome. <laughs> and little, like, Transitions like that can make such a big difference yes, in terms yes. of nutrition, but doesn't taste a whole lot different. Yep, it's or, ground beef, peppers, and guacamole. Exactly. Cilantro. These are those individual guacamole packets from that basket right there. Okay. So using ingredients in different ways um, can really go a long way. Love it. Yes. And then I'm seeing, a, I'm feeling a pizza. Over feeling here. a pizza. Friday the night is pizza is night. The, yes. the spirit is moving. So <laughs> that's right. So instead of takeout pizza, which kind of used to be our go-to. Yes. We're like, all right, we need to save some money and we're yep. gonna actually try to make it a little bit healthy. So this, we're gonna, again, I cubed up the leftover chicken. Yep, yep. And we're gonna make a chicken pesto pizza. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna do this, the pesto, if you wanna put, oh, and this is a cauliflower crust. Oh, which okay. And get what? Frozen. In, in the freezer section. Exactly. Okay. Freezer section at and pretty much taste? any grocery store. It's great. It's like a flatbread, basically. Uh, okay, which I do love flatbreads. Yeah. Some chicken. And then some um, sliced Roma tomatoes. Mm hmm. And how do your kids like it? They honestly, they love it. Um, I think sometimes we have a you have to try it rule in our house because uh, that's good. We're just not, you know. Yeah, gonna we're not going to make 18 things. things. That's yeah, what my that's exactly. how I grew up. It was like you make you try, mom cooks and that's it. So. Amen. Yep. Amen. So they try it. Um, and interestingly, it. Studies show that it takes about 20 times for a kid to try something before they start to like it, if they don't like it at first. And I give up at like two. Oh yeah, <laughs> easily, easily. So, 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 so we just keep, yeah, keep, keep trying. Yes, that's so just great. And so Absolutely. big thing again is plan, think ahead, so you're not last minute running through the drive-through and spending extra money you don't totally. need to. Think ahead and you can do stuff yes. so quickly. I mean, this is like, we literally just made these meals so fast. So I fast. love it. Yes. So great. Just a little kind of forethought. So goes a long way. So yes. you guys, if you want the, all these recipes in detail, make sure to click the link in the description and enjoy. Enjoy the good food. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks for being here. Thank you so, so much. Good. So fun. Oh, I just love Jenna. And she's so smart. I love that she kept reusing everything. And she planned out the entire week of like good, healthy foods. Love it. All right, now it's time for She Works Hard Saving Money. I love these. 
love these, love these. Abigail said, our family is growing and now it is time to get a bigger vehicle. Just paid cash for a new to us Honda Odyssey. Well done, Abigail, well done. Jesse said, I can't believe it's been nine whole years since we said I do. I would not trade our $500 wedding for anything. My grandmother was right. A wedding is just a day on the calendar, but marriage is a lifetime. Grandma's always right. Nine years, three dogs, three moves, three kids, and over $100,000 of debt accumulated and paid off, and many, many more memories to come. Oh, Jesse, congrats, that's so great. Sarah said, Emily, worked hard the last three months, saving her commissions for her pillow. She was so excited. Love this hardworking, loving girl. Give, save, and spend. Guys, I love this. I love seeing everything you're saving up for and even your kids. How cute is that? Okay, you've been posting photos, which I love, but I also want you to post videos, which is so fun because we may show them on the show. And remember to use the hashtag, she works hard saving money. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the things. So exciting. And remember you guys to like or subscribe so you do not miss the next episode. So hopefully in this episode, there was something that you could take away to make your life better. So thanks so much to our guests, The Minimalists and to Jenna. And remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.